In this video, we're going to create a procedure that needs the value of an identity before it even exists. So what it need, we're going to be adding a course, and here we see the details that we need for the course. So these are all the things that we need for the course. But we're also going to add a section at the same time. So for a section, we need the instructor, we need the course number, we need the semester, but the course number we don't know. This is one of our problems is the course number. We need a semester and a year and a location. And so the location may or may not exist yet in the system, so it's giving us for a location we need a building and a room number. So these are the parameters of the procedure. We're going to be doing inserts, so I'm going to start with a begin try. We'll do a begin try and an end try and a begin catch and that way we can control if there's errors made during it we can add those end catch and that will let us put our code right in here that we think might produce an error so what we're going to do first is an insert and we'll insert into course and we'll just start with that one And the values that we need for that are the first value, if you look at the, right, if you look at a course, the first one is a course ID, but that's an identity. So it, that will be generated by the database management system. But the th next thing we need is a course number, and we have that. So we'll add the course number and a comma. The next thing we need is a department, and order here is important, unless you list those columns each one at a time you need to do them in order then the title so that comes next and then the description and this is a parameter so all of these are parameters except that first identity one and credits and those are the things that we need to insert into the course and that will be great the next thing that we need to do is insert the is section. So we're going to insert into section. And for the section we need different values. So what we need is we need a section number but that's an identity again that will be created by the database management system. We need an instructor and that's one of the parameters so we can bring that down and we need a course. So this is our first problem. We need a course. And it turns out we just barely added the course. So it didn't exist until right here. So this is going to be a problem. It is not a parameter and can't be a parameter because it doesn't exist yet. Then we need a semester. And that came as a parameter. And we need a year. So that's good. And finally, we need a location. And it turns out this is another problem. We don't actually have a location yet. And so this is another problem. Because the actual location, they're sending us a building and a room number. And so we don't actually have a location yet. So here's two of our problems. Before we can add a semester, we need to figure out the course and the location. Let's start with the course. So I'm going to declare a variable that we can use to store this course ID so we have access to it. Now we want it to be exactly the same type as the course ID, which is an int. And then right here is where it's created. So when this insert happens, the database management system will generate that value for course ID. Well, we can get to that value right here. There's a function, so we can set course ID equal to scope identity. So this is called a scope identity, and it's a function that's built in, so we can just simply call it. And what it does is it returns the last identity that was generated in this scope. So there are other ways to get identity that's broader, but we want this to happen just with what's in our scope. We don't want it to be all database wide or so we so we're going to use scope identity and since this was the last command that generated an identity, 
it will be that value. And we just simply put it in there. Now course ID has that value, so we can just simply put it right here and use that to enter it. So it's a straight up let's do that. Now as far as the location, we also have we'll have to do some other things for that. What we have to do is we have to decide uh, whether it exists or not. And if it exists, then we'll create it, or then we'll use it. If it doesn't exist, then we'll create it. So this is a small int. And what we're going to do is, let's go see if it already exists. So set this new variable that we just defined equal to, and here I'm going to do a select. And what I'm going to be selecting is location ID from location and now I'm going to put a WHERE clause on this WHERE and building equals the parameter that was sent and room number equals the room number that was sent so if both of those are true, just select that. We're going to get that location ID. We're going to store it in there. And that's going to work great. Now, the only problem is, is what if this doesn't exist? What if there isn't a building and room number already in location? And at this point, we don't know. So we're simply going to ask. And the way that we can ask, since we just, just, since we just did a select, we could say, so if there's a location ID, it will return it and store it in this variable. If there isn't one, it will store null in there. We can just simply say, if location ID is null, then we know nothing was returned. And in that case, what do we want to do? Well, in that case, let's simply create it. We have enough information to create that location. So let's just add it. So we'll just do an insert into location values and we'll use this building and this room number that were sent as parameters and that will give us enough information to create this location in the database and now we need now that we've inserted it we need the location ID here so how are we going to get that we just we're going to use that scope identity again, but this time we're going to set location ID. It's the wrong one I have saved. We're going to set location ID equal to scope identity. So right there, just pick it up and set it equal to scope identity. All right, now if it's not null, then it has a value and we can just simply use location ID. So in either case, either location ID has the correct ID here. If it doesn't, we'll insert it and it will have it here. So now we can use that down here in this location. And now we have everything we need to insert a section. Now notice that we have one, two, for sure two and possibly three different inserts. So let's go ahead and make this a transaction. So we'll start a begin transaction. And then if everything works, so if we get all the way down here, we'll go ahead and commit that transaction. And if it doesn't work, then we'll come down here and we'll do a rollback. And that way we'll either get all three of them entered or none of them. And then if we get down here and there's a problem, let's go ahead and say, hey, there's a problem. So uh, error occurred. Course and section were not added. And up here, since everything worked, we could do a print and we could say course and we could tell them what the ID is. If I don't know if that's important or not, it depends on the thing. But now notice that course ID is an int, so we can't just do this directly. We have to cast and we can do the course ID and we'll just cast it as a varchar. course, whatever that ID number is, 
was added. Okay, let's cross our fingers and see how the, if this will compile. And it's not. All right, so let's go figure out what this is. Tw error right by line 27. And here, notice that the line number is a little bit different because it's starting with the batch number rather than all the way in the top. And here it's saying, hey, you can't set equal to select. You need to put this in parentheses. So we'll put that in parentheses. Try again. It's pretty normal to get an error, right? Okay, so it all compiled and everything seems to be working good. Let's go ahead and test it. So we'll get a new query. And I have a couple over here to test. Now this one, uh, Science 321, already exists in here. So if we go up here, this location already exists. So we'll test the execute add course light with this. Uh, we want to make sure that when we're executing this, that we use the right database. So this one's student U3. And then we can go ahead and do the execute. And we execute. And sure enough, it says it added two rows. So that would be the course and the section. We, should, we can go ahead and go look at that. We can simply say, well, tell us if the course is in there and the section. So if we look, there's the section added for fall 2019. And we can look at the course. And we can see there's organic chemistry that was added. So yep, it was in there. Let's do one where the location is not in there. So we'll just do another query and execute it. And this one produced three rows because it inserted a location as well. And we can look up that location. So we'll scroll down and see if we can find it. And there it is. It added that location. So it's working both ways, both when the location already exists and when it doesn't. And that's how we're able to get the identity that doesn't yet exist when our procedure begins. Right? The identity doesn't exist till we do this, this insert, and we can just use that scope identity function to capture that identity that was just added.